Tchau, pet. Extra honest. Extra unbiased. But a little bit shady. <laughs> Go ahead, like and subscribe. Hi you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Del and you're here to be extra with Del. If you're new to my channel, then I must let you know that I vlog about beauty pageants yearly and talk about, oh, whatever. I'm going to recap the Miss Universe 2023 that just happened, you guys. And let's, oh my God, I'm wearing this shirt for a reason, you guys, because I need to be held back because I am about to pop off like hardcore. So let's begin, you guys. Okay. First and foremost, before we start this, please grab your gun, grab your knife, your samurai, machete, or whatever you use to kill people. Hide it, because I know how you all feel right now, because, whoo, that was, let's start. All right, you guys, so I have notes, because I'm a true journalist, no, I'm kidding. So, okay, top 20, you guys, let's go one by one. I don't have accompanied um, images, because, you know, copyrights and stuff like that, I'm not having that shit again, okay? Um, so Nicaragua, obviously, she uh, that was expected. She was the first to go in. Spain, obviously, I knew that Latinos needed to bring an Afro-Latina. And I knew that Spain was going to make it because she's Afro-Latina. Puerto Rico, of course, she's a stunning babe. Namibia, that tall bitch. She's 6'3". I knew it. I was like, yo, like she might make it because she did compete at Miss World before. Venezuela, of course, they want to please the crowd because I bet you like... 70% of the crowd is Venezuelan, just like last year, where there was so many Venezuelan, as if, like, they have nowhere to be. I'm like, damn, you guys are all here. <laughs> uh, India, Shweta made it, you guys. Congratulations. Uh, Thailand, of course. She's over there with her fraudulent eyes and her fake lips, her lip fillers. Um, Chile, my number one girl. She made it. Thank God. Girl, uh, let's not even go there, guys. Uh, Jamaica, I knew she was going to make it, but I wasn't so sure about her eyes because they were really far apart. But you know what? They're very beautiful, even though they're a little bit far apart. Um, USA, of course, she had to Her introduction video, she mentioned like she's Venezuelan, like, I don't know, like five times, obviously. She has to because she needs to grow to be on her side, you guys. But uh, next, the joke, the biggest joke of all time, Nepal. She made it in because of a, an agenda, because they want inclusivity. I'm like, girl, this is Miss Universe. This is not a reality show, okay? This is not a reality show where we want to include everybody, okay? Because if that's the case, I'm going to send my dog to Miss Universe because my dog has an incredible pasarela and catwalk, okay? But Nepal, really? Uh, Peru made it, you guys. I, I was so shocked. This Because Peru really changed it up. She went from like looking like OnlyFans model to really something elegant. Good for her. Um, Cameroon. I told you guys, that hair. Love that hair of hers. And really, she stood out, you guys. Um, Colombia. I almost didn't recognize her without her daughter in her hand. She really made it. She made it, you guys. Wow, even with that boring gown she wore during preliminary, she made it. But I mean, it's no surprise. She is like, you know, she is a, she's, she works as a journalist. So her speaking skills is probably incredible. Uh, and then we had um, Pakistan, duh. Pakistan was the winner of the preliminary evening gown competition. So obviously she has to be included in this, you guys. Um, and then we had Australia. Of course, she was really strong during the preliminary also. Uh, the Philippines, thank God she made it because uh, in my final prediction, I had her at my number seven. But I was like, but you know what? If she brings it, she's going to move forward. We'll get to that in a little bit. I will reserve my comments. Um, and then Portugal, as I said this in my video, I had her in my top, uh, I think... She was my top 19. I was like, you know what? I think they're going to bring her in for political reason too, okay? And th But you know what? She did kind of deserve it because she did have a really strong performance during um, the preliminary. However, I saw her without makeup. Guys, she looks like a raccoon. But there was like, um, she has humongous like dark, er dark areas around her eyes. No, seriously. I'm not even judging her, but I'm just saying. She has like dark eyes, like uh, uh, circles around her eyes. Like I was shocked. I was like, that's Portugal? What in the world is it? Like, someone punched her. Uh, South Africa, they could not forget our Indian goddess, South African queen. Hello? And then, lastly, the regation. This is when the rigness start, when El Salvador made it. We all know El Salvador does not deserve to be in there, you guys. She went, She made it in because it, she's hosting. Just like Grinder, she's the host, and we have to treat the host respectfully, Okay. Okay, going on to the next competition, the swimsuit competition, you guys. 
Okay, you guys, now off to the swimsuit competition. Uh, oh, we finally see those awful, awful swimsuit again, that LeMay fabric with the hemorrhoid details on the chest. Anyway, you guys, so during the swim, I thought Nicaragua, obviously, she, I'm telling you, that's like her best, she has like an amazing walk. It's like sexy, flirty, but still appropriate for the pageant. Uh, Puerto Rico kind of nailed it, you guys. I was like loving her. India can definitely walk. Uh, Chile was super simple and super beautiful. I mean, she really was super beautiful to me. Uh, I don't, unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Cameroon, I thought was really stunning. And I wish she was a little bit more, um, with her hair was a little bit more wilder and I would have loved that. Pakistan, I thought she looked amazing and still really, really beautiful. And she kept what worked for her during the preliminary and that makeup, that hair. And I thought she, her being represented during swimsuit is amazing. Um, Australia, she actually was really rocking it during swimsuit competition. South Africa was stunning, but she was not giving enough, you know? Uh, Portugal, she can walk, 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 you guys. Really, she can really walk. And so, obviously, you know how, we do, how this all goes down. The top 10 from the swimsuit became Puerto Rico. I thought she deserved that. Thailand, I mean, I guess at this point, sure, whatever. Um, Peru, I was really shocked that Peru made it because she had, she looks like she hasn't eaten for like months, you guys. No, she looks like she's about to pass out. Seriously. Um, Colombia, of course, she's going to make it. The political correctness, uh, the politics is going to be playing into this because they need a mother to be represented. Even though, to me, I just felt like she, she doesn't look fresh. Like, really? Colombia? Uh, Nicaragua, of course, we need a Central American to be represented, you guys. And of course, for the day one, she's always been a, such a standout, you guys. Uh, Philippines, of course, she makes it. And I was like, oh, it's over for these bitches. Because I already knew that the Philippines, once she makes it into the evening gown, and that, uh, I will still reserve my opinion on that. Um, so Philippines makes it. So in my head, I'm like, oh my God, this is it, you guys. Because again, I had her in my top, she was in my top seven in my final prediction. So I was like, as, so, as, as long as she can get past um, swim and get into evening gown, she's going to rock it out. Because I already know. I know. They're not going to know. We were going to know. We're going to know. We're going to know. Anyway, so next is El Salvador. Of course, the rigness is still there. I'm like, really, El Salvador? Out of all the Desi girls? What none of the Desi girls made it, you guys. I mean, really, thank you for your inclusivity for not including one of the Desi girls. If you guys don't know what Desi girls are, Desi girls are like Indian looking girls, you know, Pakistanis. Uh, well, you know, South Africa is um, Indian descent, so she's one of them as well, but she's a South African, uh, obviously, in the Shweta Sharta. Um, and then Venezuela and her nose made it. Really, girl? That is, I'm sure they just wanted to make sure that the um, Venezuelans were included because, again, there's 70% of the crowd is probably Venezuelan. Um, Australia makes it. Obviously, she was really strong. And Spain, Spain makes it too, you guys. Okay, you guys, for now for the evening gown competition, uh, Puerto Rico, oh my God, she looks stunning. Thank God she wore a lavender and not some God, oh, boring gold or silver or something, something that like with a collar, you know, like Ashley Carino's, um, um little dress from last year. That, that was not cute. So thank God she has something a little bit more edgier and a little bit more modern. So I love that about Puerto Rico. I thought Puerto Rico would look really good in that color. Thailand, boring, really. And she too looked really tired for some reason. I think maybe like the Botox is going away. I don't know, something like that. Peru actually looked really good during preliminary. But again, as I mentioned, she looked so skinny, you guys. And they did a good job by like elevating her look and not making her look like a fashion nova or like, you know, an OnlyFans model. And then of course, um, Colombia, kept to that boring dress and I was like really girl this is how you're gonna try to win in a silver strapless dress again Colombia really um Nicaragua oh my god I'm loving her and I love this is a key to every queen you guys you always have to take a piece of your country with you Catriona Gray Zosie Beanie those girls brought like something with like they wore dresses that represented their country and I think that's an always Good representation, especially the commentator uh, mentioned it. So, and then we have um, El Salvador, another boring girl that's like, why are you even there, El Salvador? You shouldn't, you know, oh, I know it. Well, I know because you're from El Salvador. No, meaning why are you in the comp the evening gown competition? Because you don't belong there. I'm serious. You don't belong into the competition, El Salvador. I'm sorry. And then the Philippines. 
I gagged so hard, you guys. I lost my gag reflex when I saw fucking Philippines, you guys. I was like, oh my God, she, this is it, you guys. No wonder she was like, oh, don't worry. I got this on the preliminary night. What I love about the Philippines is like, it was edgy. The construction was really impeccable. It's modern and it's still appropriate for a, like um, uh, a pageant, you know? And I love, love, love that design so much. I gag, like I told you guys, I don't have gag reflex. So holler at me if you, <laughs> if you want to try it out. And no, I'm kidding. So Philippines worked it out. She looked freaking amazing. And then her hair looked great. It's not to the side. The side that it's in the middle, middle part. She looked amazing. I really wish it was more of like, it wasn't wet, but you know what? She looked amazing. I thought she was the best one during the freaking evening gown competition. I mean, everybody knows that. Like every, you can hear the crowd gasping and gagging you guys. So I thought she looked incredible. And then Australia, you know, whatever. She wore the same thing from Prelim. Spain, I could see her underwear. Girl, who dressed her? Like seriously, I could literally see her underwear. Uh, thank God she didn't wear like color and like it was like nude or something like that. But she needed a bodysuit underneath that. Didn't someone tell her like you have to wear like some sort of corset or a bodysuit underneath like see-through nude illusion dress? So you guys, so for the evening gown competition, I really, really love the Philippines, you guys. This is where I was like, okay, you know what? This is it. Michelle D is going to the next round and she's going to murder every one of them. Not only she already murdered them by outshining, like by like out, like standing out during the evening gown competition, you know? Um, and she was the only one in black. So I thought that was really cool because everybody was like in silver. Yeah. Everybody was like literally in silver. Boring. Um, so, you know, the result was top five was Australia. Um, Puerto Rico, of course. This is where Puerto Rico does, goes really, like this is where Puerto Rico excel. Getting into the top five and then from there on, it's like a shuffle. You know what I'm saying? Um, Nicaragua, of course. I think, I thought that her story of her dress, I mean, her dress wasn't the most outstanding, but I think the story was incredible. Thailand made it in, obviously, uh, because, you know, they were going to try to get her to win. Um, Colombia made it because she's got a story to tell and you know, political agenda, so on and so forth. But she too wasn't a boring, boring silver dress, you guys. Really? This is one of the worst top five I've ever witnessed in Miss Universe um, ever since I was, you know, well, since I started watching it. This is the worst Miss Universe top five ever. And we haven't even gotten to the question and answer. Let's do that. Okay, now on to the question and answer, you guys. So let's start with Australia. Um, so this is basically me roasting all the girls. I'm kidding. So Australia, she was asked how to promote gender equality. And she said some generalized stuff that we need to bond. And the more people involved, yada, 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 whatever. I, I make more sense than that when I'm drunk. Okay. Uh, Puerto Rico, she was asked, what will you bring to the Miss Universe brand? Uh, hello, her gorgeousness. But to me, like... I feel like she should have just spoken Spanish. She she like literally psyched herself out by like not speaking in Spanish. And I think in her head, she's like, oh, I should probably just use a translator because I mean, the audience is Latino anyway. So you want the crowd to be on your side. So I thought this would have been a perfect time for her to just use Espanol. Cause I mean, I would have, cause shoot, I want to win, okay. But she kind of froze up and again, this is very typical of Puerto Rico. They get to the final, they get to the final five and they just freeze and gets nervous, you guys. So they need to figure that out, you guys, because I mean, they did something about the gown tonight. So, but being able to like have an incredible communicator in the top five is super key, you guys. Uh, and then Nicaragua, she was asking Spanish, uh, what qualities and values guide you to be a role model? And she did not make sense. I was like, huh? She's like, I, you know, I would advise like women to appreciate little things. Like, huh? What does that have to do, do with like anything to, you know, for you to be a, a role model for others? Like, why aren't you talking about your education or the charity work you've done, et cetera, et cetera. So that was really bizarre, you guys. And that was in Spanish, okay? Okay, so Thailand. Thailand actually got the easiest question Probably something that she's already answered millions and millions of times because we all know she gets probably bullied 
every day ever since she won against Vina. <laughs> um, so, you know, so her answer was actually really good. I thought she gave a really good answer and she gave a positive answer. She gave, a, uh, she, she, she described the situation and she gave a solution. So I thought Thailand actually did really well during top five. See, I'm not all of a hater. I'm not 100% hater. And then we get to Colombia. Um, first of all, who's that guy? Ask Colum uh, Mario, is that his name? Um, he's kind of cute. Um, and he kind of like, mm, we, I'm going to have to research him. Okay. Uh, and then Colombia, I don't think she understood the answer. Because the, the question, I mean the question, because the question was like, if you were to live your last day and she's like, oh, I'm living it now. Is she about to die or something? I'm like, I hope not because she's got two kids to feed. Okay. Especially she left them like at home. Or by themselves with a with um, Abuelita in the last couple of weeks, you guys, because you know she's competing. Uh, so she didn't answer the question because solely because she didn't understand it. So I don't understand why they didn't translate that to her or something like that. So that was really bizarre. All in all, you guys, this has to be the worst. The W O R S T top five Q and A ever. Of like, I'm just so disappointed. I'm telling you guys, I would literally. We can all go up there and like be top five because I mean, these girls did not have it. Ha yeah, no, this is not cute. No, no, uh, no. Okay, now on to the top three, you guys. So Thailand makes it first, Australia makes it next. Now they left out all the, um, the Spanish speaker. I was like, uh, hello, you need a Spanish speaker. That's to me, I've always thought that they were, they're going to crown somebody who speaks Spanish. So I was like, wow, are they not going to crown, you know, a Spanish speaker? So that's ultimately, I thought like, oh, they're going to rig this for, for, um, Antonia so they can battle out with MGI. Cause you know, Miss MGI right now has 4 million followers and like Antonia has like what, 1.5 or almost 2 million followers on Instagram. You know, it's a popularity contest when it comes to those Thai people. Okay. Um, so for Q and A for the last one, so they have ask a question, who can they be in the, whose shoes they can be in. And so they should be in my shoes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So a Thailand answer, Malala Yousafzai, an education activist. Um, you know, so to me, actually Thailand, I was kind of good. At least she was able to give a reference. Uh, an individual uh, figure that we can all kind of like research or something like that. However, it's she's not well known. And in addition to that, she kind of just shortened her answer. She gave her answer very briefly. And then she didn't really know how to kind of, um, I don't, I don't understand why she didn't tie it to the force for good kind of um, answer, kind of like what Arbany, Arbany did. And, you know, uh, during her um, competition at um, Miss Universe Thailand, she was able to tie her answer to um, the light of glory crown or whatever. But I guess she didn't rehearse this answer because, you know, she's the queen of rehearsing answer and copy and paste. Next is Australia. Uh, same question. She gave clearly she's still probably in college or something like that. Or I don't know, because she gave her mother. To me, when you give your mother as an answer, I mean, that's really sweet and everything, but that doesn't work, you guys. We need an intelligent individual who knows what they're talking about and have inspiration and aspirations and have knowledge of, like, you know, women figures in, like, women's history. Uh, and lastly, it's Nicaragua. Now, finally, she redeemed herself in Espanol. Um, so for me, Nicaragua, I thought her referencing... Um, Mary Watson, uh, I thought that was, that showed really the educational level that she has and that she really knows she, she's all about women empowerment. And I know that that's always been her platform prior to going into Miss Universe, um, 2023. As soon as I saw her get crowned and, and then understood like her educational level and how she's matured from Miss World, I was like, oh, okay. She's educated. She's well educated, but you know, she just is limited in English. But as I mentioned in the beginning of Miss Universe, I started recapping Miss Universe. I was like, you know what? I really think that they're not even going to care if the person speaks English or not because it's going to be in a Latin country. And it's going to be in Latin country again. So hello. Um, so that's about it, you guys. Out of all the three, I thought, you know, they kind of, well, I, I thought Thailand um, was okay. You know, I, at least she was able to give a reference. Australia was pretty terrible. I don't even know how she got to top three, honestly, you guys. 
Um, I guess we haven't seen a blonde girl in a while in like the top three. So like, well, let's throw it in there. Let's throw her in there, okay? And then Nicaragua, I think she's the one who killed it the most. Not only her answers has substance and you know, there's a point of reference that we can kind of look up and really understand that what goes in that, you know, little beautiful brain of Miss Nicaragua, of Shaney's Palacios. And to me, the way, the fact that she was so comfortable in talking about that topic, I thought that was really incredible, you guys. So on to the next um, situation, you guys. Okay, you guys, next is the president's final walk. <laughs> so as you guys, if you guys didn't know, like um, the president of El Salvador is currently in, uh, I think they're having an election soon or something like that. And I read somewhere from a good source like CNN that like they're using this platform to for him to get reelected or something like that you guys but his term is already going to be over or something like that so that was so propaganda kind of vibe there where she, he was like standing there was like oh thank you so much blah blah blah, uh -huh, blah blah well at least his pasarela and his catwalk is still better than Miss Universe Nepal okay mm-mm so um, that was so bizarre. And finally, they introduced um, Mexico. Uh, we already knew that it was going to be in Mexico. Um, that it, That's where the next Miss Universe is, where I, where I will be going, you guys. So if you're going to Mexico next year, I will be there. And let's all be extra together. Hell no. But just don't hurt me, you guys. I know you. some of you guys want to hurt me because I'd be saying crazy stuff, okay? I, I'm very friendly, you guys. If I meet you guys and we all like just hang out and like take shots together in Mexico, I love that. Um, so that was weird. And then the Mexican president did his pasarela walk too. Who do you guys think? Who do you guys think did a pasarela better? The, the president of the El Salvador or Mexico? Who do you guys think? Oh, we're making it into a competition, okay? <laughs> I should make a video of them like um, walking along each other, like President of El Salvador versus President of Mexico. Anyway, you guys, so it's going to be in Mexico, so I will see you guys there. Um, and then, Arbany, why does she look, you guys, she looks, have you guys ever seen that movie The Cell with Jennifer Lopez? She looks like Jennifer Lopez from that movie where like Jennifer Lopez was wearing something like that. So I was like, girl, what is she wearing? I mean, I get it. She's a fashionista, but that was a little too Met Gala-ish. And, um, hmm, it was, yeah. Was that a, Fil was that a Filipino designer? Because <laughs> it's extra AF, okay? Um, and then, now onto the crowning moment, guys. All right, guys, finally onto the crowning moment. So, uh, second runner-up is Miss Universe Australia. Uh, as, you know, I mean, it's expected. She actually... I actually didn't think she deserved to be in the top three. Whatever. Call me racist, but I don't think that, um, not racist, but like, um, I mean, just like, she's just a blonde girl. I mean, like, what's so exciting about her? No, but to me, I just thought she was like, when she was like standing during, during top five, I was like, she literally doesn't stand out. Uh, but I still love her, you guys. But this is an elevated competition now because it's top three. So obviously she deserved a second runner up, you guys. And uh, for the first runner up is going to be Thailand, you guys, uh, when they were holding hands, I knew that like Nicaragua was going to win because they have to crown somebody who speaks Spanish. I just knew it from the moment I saw Nicaragua win. I knew okay, I didn't have her as my top. My fi I did not have her as my number one spot because I was always scared of like her communication skills, you guys. So I always thought that like, OK, well, I can't put Nicaragua in like my top five. She was my number. She was my number four in my final prediction because uh, girl i had chile and fucking brazil uh, never again i'm gonna trust these lo s low market small market like um countries okay no shade chile and um brazil i still love them okay but um wow that was such a letdown Ugh. Uh, anyway so i should have put nicaragua i've always thought honestly i've asked so many other of my friends like who they thought was going to be when a winner and nicaragua was always in their top five so i was like i should have just went with my guts oh like olivia rodrigo's album you guys which is a good album um so i just should have just went with my guts because and i remember when she was crowned like somewhere in midsummer somewhere in los angeles in usa which is like in june no july august something like that so i i knew when the moment i saw her and i was just like yo she is gonna be the next miss universe because she embodies exactly that um you know that co um central american beauty 
and um, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna freaking like crown a neighboring country. I just knew it. Like, you know, and they, I just didn't know which country it was, you know, because I was so scared of Nicaragua's um, speaking abilities. Um, Cause we've been, we've seen so many like English speaking country or not country, but like every girl from other countries speaks English super well. But again, I figured they were gonna crown somebody who's a Spanish speaker and the very fact that she's gonna have to go to Mexico next year and, you know, promote Miss Universe, it just makes sense to have a Spanish speaking um, queen to represent, um, uh, to be crowned in El Salvador. And I thought that was really brilliant of her to bring that flat, um, that cape that she had with that dress. I mean, it wasn't cute. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I wish she uh, her dress was a little bit more like the same color, you know, in the shades of turquoise or whatever, like that color is. Um, so um, I thought that she should have wore something that kind of is tonal along with that flag color. So I think that would have been amazing. But nonetheless, I thought she was the perfect winner for... Um, Miss Universe El Salvador because of the very fact that they needed to really highlight a Central American country to represent, you know, it's all about finding the perfect girl that represents that geography. You guys, that's why I always ensure and I consider the geography where it's held at and, you know, who's going to be the most appropriate to represent that country. Like looking back from historical perspective, like Catriona Gray, she wins in Thailand, just nearby the Philippines. Perfect. What a perfect winner. Um, so Zimini wins in Atlanta, highly, highly um, African-American populated um, a state in the United States. Totally perfect to have a beautiful black skin girl, um, dark skin girl to win in, um, you know, in Atlanta. So just like stuff like that, you guys, it just, you know, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a political agenda, but I just feel like it's a show and you want, and from a historical perspective, you want like a significant um, event to happen in that broadcasting. So, and that's about it, you guys. So this year... Um, it, it was really difficult to find the queen. I mean, honestly, I've always had Nicaragua, but I was just like, I don't know, I don't trust her, you know? Because, I, the you know, bilinguality is so important. But I mean, I know her English is there. It is limited. But to me, I'm just, I was a little bit hesitant in putting her in my number one spot. So I went with someone else that are like fresher and younger. But she is only 23. I know, right? She's only 23. I thought she was older. Um, so that's about it, you guys. Let me know what you guys think of the show. Congratulations to all your countries that made it. Um, I'm not even, I, I don't know who, how many girls did I meet that I predicted? Okay, look at, let me look at my journalist notes. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen girls that I predicted in my top 20 to make it, you guys. So, um, what about you guys? How did you guys do with your list? <laughs> Oh my God, I know, whatever. Um, so again, this is probably one of the worst Miss Universe edition I've ever seen, you guys. I mean, that top five was so mediocre. That's why it was so difficult to um, pick a, a winner this year because like it was mediocrity all over, okay? It, except for a few candidates, okay? Again, the, they rigged, okay, they did not put Michelle, um, the Philippines, so they can ensure. They were really trying to set this up for Thailand, you guys. I already know that they were. I mean, you take away the biggest threat to Thailand, which is Philippines, and she looked um, incredible. Hell, even like Antonia will ag agree that she looks amazing, okay? Because they secretly are, pro they probably are secretly sleeping with each other. I'm kidding. Um, but I, uh, yeah, so that was a little bit rigged, you guys. So they had to do what they needed to do so the Philippines does not make it to the top five because that Michelle D really did. She ate that evening gown competition, okay? She ate that evening gown. Not like Nepal ate, she ate, you guys. Meaning we were gagging and she ate that evening gown competition. It's absolutely no competition. When, he came, when she came out, she killed it, okay? And she was inviting. So I thought, anyway... I mean, I'm not even trying to be biased, you guys. As you guys know, I'm extra honest and extra unbiased, but it's just the way it is. Like, Michelle D of the Philippines rock that evening gown competition. So, I don't know what happened after that. Okay. So, that's about it, you guys. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you guys for um, 
supporting my channel and watching everything I, my from my rant to really dumb stuff that I do in front of my camera. So even these hands grabbing my bruise, okay? Um, so again, you guys, I'm about to go out. Hopefully I don't take all this aggression out and murder somebody. <laughs> So um, it's Saturday night here in Los Angeles. I'm sure it's like Sunday morning somewhere there. So go ahead and go to church and pray because, girl, we need it because we are hysterical right now. Okay. Okay, you guys, that's about it. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I will be vlogging a little bit here and there if like Miss Universe released some content. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys want to continue hearing my annoying voice. Hello. Okay, that's about you guys. Follow me on my IG if you want to keep in touch. Also, um, leave your comment down below. What did you guys think, you guys? Like, seriously, what did you guys think of the show? Let me know your extra honest, extra unbiased opinion in the comment box. And um, again, if I don't, if you guys don't watch me again till next year, happy holidays. And again, enjoy your beautiful life. And I will see you guys soon, okay? Love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Bye.